the genesis of, uh, of rectify to you know to rectify um, came from uh, uh, you know just being interested in the judicial system in the United States as a as a person who's interested in various topics and and uh, and I've been following you know DNA for a while and and I, and the, you know the idea of people getting released after years of, of, of being in prison and what that must be like on, on an experiential level uh, w w is interesting you know uh, when you're what's basically a character study. Uh, th and, th and then there was this particular uh, group of cases in Illinois uh, uh, about a decade ago where there were th three or four cases right in a row where DNA definitively s proved that that this guy who was on death row for rape and murder, it, it was n there was only one uh, sample of sperm and it wasn't his. You know, and it was it was so cut and dried that you know they they were exonerated, and then the governor of the state at the time, uh, I believe, uh, uh, commuted all the death uh, row sentences because he felt like I need to get them all right, and if one's wrong, then I shouldn't do this, and and that gathered a lot of attention, and 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 you s and I saw these people getting off, uh, you know, for the first time in 20 years of. This, you know, death row in, in states in Georgia and in, in, in the United States are, are very uh, uh, restricted, very much more restricted than, than general prison. And so these guys in this very restricted conditions are being let out into this wild new world with all that the world has from technology to, you know, the, the, the challenges of, of the world that test us all. And so that interested me as a as a fantasizer of fiction, and and I started seeing this guy getting released and, and thinking about that on a on a tonal tonal level first, and uh, but I just didn't feel like anybody was really uh, there was a market for this show, you know, and I, and I felt like it needed to be a serial. Not we didn't need to tell the story in an hour and forty five minutes. It needed to. And, and the other thing I wanted to do is explore telling the story uh, over a day by day. Exp uh, ex I didn't want to leap ahead to 30 days later. You know, I wanted to really see what would happen. And so, so you know, that was the genesis. And then I was inspired by uh, a number of shows that over the last 15 years that that I thought a lot of the great storytelling was happening on television, uh, from The Sopranos to. Then there were Six Feet Under, and then, then you know there came a whole group of shows, and finally, Mad Men was the the show that that I went, though totally different in topic. There's a tonal similarity. There's a uh, uh, there's you you have to be patient. It's uh, somewhat meditative at times. Uh, it's it's not always rushing towards a, a conclusion, and it goes off on paths that you least expect. And from an audience member who gets bored with kind of the usual uh, storytelling uh, uh, structures. Uh, it was it, it was very inspiring, and I thought you know maybe this this could happen. I'm primarily a feature producer. I you know I executive produce uh, Breaking Bad, but a couple of other and, and done some other some other things over over the years, including uh, The Guardian with Simon Baker on CBS, but but primarily do features, and Ray and I actually worked on, he worked as an actor on two movies I produced, um, Bugsy that Barry Levinson directed and A Perfect World that Clint Eastwood directed. So I had gotten to know him a little bit and, and was aware that he was a writer, but it wasn't until 12 years ago when I was watching the Oscars and I saw Ray and his wife Lisa and his business partner Walton Goggins Win, win an Oscar for best short film that Ray wrote, directed, and starred in. And I thought, oh, I've, I've really got to pay some t attention to him. So over the years, I've, I followed, followed up. And a couple of years ago, I called him out of nowhere, and he was in Arkansas. He said, funny you should call. I just wrote this thing. And of course, it was Rectify. And I so loved it immediately. I just immediately was drawn to it. And there's this a central character who is, on one hand, very enigmatic and sort of without, you're not quite sure where you come out on him. This is a character who has been condemned to die for, and for 19 years been on death row 
and now for the is, is let out and the whole show is about in many ways the world how he affects and even compromises everybody around him those people who don't want him out for for whatever political or or or, or dramatic reasons and those people who love him like his mother and sister all of a sudden everything they wanted is there and now what what do you do with almost this man child who doesn't at one point his stepbrother says to him his half brother says to him something about it well you know he's going to look at a movie but he mostly streams on iPad and you can see that this central character who has no idea what iPad is what streaming is whatever so this person is dropped in their midst and i just love the uh, it's interesting Dr ray probably has a much more profound reason for having written it. I love the, the fact that how it works dramatically and most importantly just the strength of the characters. Sundance has been extraordinary and I, I know it's, it's probably not new for a producer to praise whoever's financing his or his or show but they have been so extraordinary in that they have embraced from the very beginning what Rectify was didn't at any point try and turn it into something else. And quite frankly, they have been so supportive of Ray McKinnon because they realize it is such a filmmaker's piece, which was what's great about television though. The best shows on TV truly belong to their creators, be it uh, you know Breaking Bad with Vince Gilligan or Matt Weiner with, with Mad Men. And Sundance has made it clear that Rectify is Ray McKinnon's Rectify and how do we, you know, how do we support him do it what he needs to do. I think they'll respond very favorably because it's all about characters and drama. It's not, there's nothing that would limit it from traveling around, around, the, around the world. And you see some of the shows that are working internationally. There's no reason that this show shouldn't shouldn't work because it's a, it's a situation it's characters who you can understand it's 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 a dramatic context that is not in any way unique to any particular uh, or region or time so i would like to think and we're very happy we're thrilled that it's itv who's is out there uh, uh, representing us but i i think we we have a shot to do very well internationally whether it was wishful thinking and or or based upon some uh knowledge of, of the, the world outside of America, I, I, I feel like there is some fascination with, you know, with America is still, you know, a little bit of Wild West and, and then the South is so contradictory and, and has so, you know, such, such lightness and dark all mixed together and uh, the death penalty and, you know, we're, we're the only Western nation that still has that and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not totally surprised that there is some fascination to that. So, uh, and I feel like in some ways uh, this show uh, to me feels like some of the shows that, that I've seen in, you know, European shows. I, you know, it feels uh, that we're not pandering to the lowest common denominator and, and you, you do have to lean in and participate as opposed to be being fed every, you know, every emotion. And so I, I'm gratified. You know, and I hope, I hope, uh, I think there's a market for that in around the world. <laughs>